If you have your Bibles and you're in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16, you just say amen. Amen. We're still looking for that verse amen. after we've said it, just say, Cut me Lord. Amen. Let me, let me help you understand the book of Galatians a little bit. Uh, the book of Galatians is uh, a book that's written uh, under much uh, controversy. Uh, much like the, the status of the church here, I'm going to show you this today. I'm going to try to really uh, move through this and kind of get us to a point to where um, uh, you have a good working uh, understanding of the background of Galatians. So that when I go into the text, you understand uh, why the author is saying what he's saying. Number one, that's noticeable about the book of Galatians, that the very first verse, uh, Paul does not give a warm greeting. Uh, to the church of Galatia. He doesn't give a warm greeting to them because there have been some men who have come into the church and they are espousing that it is time for them to go back to the same old stuff mm -hmm. uh, that they used to do called Judaism. Okay. Uh, they have taught the congregation that uh, the old law, uh, the old law, that if, 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 let me modernize the argument, uh, that we go by the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that, that, that there are things under the Mosaic law that we're going back to, and for instance, circumcision, we're going back to circumcision. We're going back to our old customs, and we're going to Judaize the church. And the church is not standing up being the church. Uh, it is equivalent to folk that you meet in the Church of Christ today who want to go back to the old days of lawsonism and just do stuff like you've always done things. While new people are coming into the church uh, and, and are liberated and realize it's okay to say amen. 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 It's okay to clap your hands and shout and say thank you Jesus. The old part of the church is saying let's go back to the good days where you sit with your head down and just look and just be amazed and excited at the preaching. And then you just close your Bible, have no spiritual accounting, uh, accounting of yourself, and just go back home. And we just want to do what we always do. And so they sing the same old songs that they sung 40 years ago. And they do the same old stuff. Well, there's a new spirit coming into the church who go in the newness of God that want to sing something that's relevant to them. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. Right? Amen. Uh, you know, folk, 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 folk come to church because God has liberated them from something. Yeah. And they have a relationship and they're on a journey to find God. But when they got to the church house, it was that same old dead, dry, traditional, unspiritual, unemotional praise that sit back and look like they own part of heaven right now that they ran into. Mm, I wish I had a prayer in church right now. Amen. Because if you understand that they want to go back to the good old days instead of where God had brought them to. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back nowhere God took me from. Amen. There's some people I met back then I don't want to meet no more. Amen. Amen. And there's some stuff I went through when I was young I don't want to go back to no more. I don't want to go back to crawling no more now that I'm walking. I want to wait. Y'all not saying amen. amen. I don't want to go back to having to wear a pimper now that I can take care of myself. There's some stuff I don't want to go back to. And so Paul comes to the church. He walks in the church. And, 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 you know, can, can, I, can I say it very quickly? I'm struggling with myself because I, I'm trying to push this church forward to Christ. And it feels like some Judaizers come up in here and try to pull the church back to the good old days. Folk don't want to worship with folk that don't have the Spirit of God in them. And if you're sitting right here and you got a piece of spirit in you, can't you say amen this morning? Can't you say thank you, Jesus, this morning? I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I was visiting a church where folk looked like they was mad at everybody, I don't want to be nowhere the Spirit of God does not exist because I've been through too much. So Paul said, Paul said, I'm mad at y'all. I'm upset with you. And Paul came to the church and said, number one, I want to introduce myself that I am a man of God, not because of the good old system. I was not with you when you went up on the mountain with Jesus. And I was not with you when you walked around with Jesus. My way, I came because God predestined before I was born that I would be Paul instead of Saul. In other words, I'm a man of God, not by the 
the will of people, but I'm a man of God by the will of God. Y'all now listen to me right now. I don't have to come up through your Jewish system, although I was in your Jewish system working on the wrong side, but God freed me from that, and I'm laboring preaching the gospel of Christ. Then he looked at the church who ought to have been happy, like for real. They should have been so happy, like a house, a room without a roof. They should have been happy because God had done something for them. They should, y'all ought to be happy this morning. Y'all ought to be happy this morning. You still got your boyfriend, you ought to be happy this morning. Susan, you could have took your boyfriend, you ought to be happy this morning. And you still got your girlfriend, you ought to be happy this morning. Now, all the change in your pocket can't keep her, but she's still here. Somebody say amen. You ought to be happy this morning. If you got breath in your body, you ought to be happy. This you didn't have to get up this morning. You ought to be happy. You ought to be happy. I was happy to play in church this morning. And so Paul, Paul, Paul said, I'm astonished that I've come to the house of God. And let me tell you, whenever there's, there's, there's heretic, and whenever there's false doctrine, and whenever there's a false spirit, and the spirit of God is not there, that place goes into bondage. Let me say it again. Whenever there's a false spirit, Watch Paul, watch Paul. Anthony, yes. verse 6, chapter 1. Watch what he says. Watch what he says now. He says, I marvel that you are I marvel that you are so soon removed. I, I can't believe you left a good God. For him that called you unto his grace of, the, of Christ unto another God. You done left the grace of God for the, the, the legal system of me. Which is not another. There's not another. But there be some that trouble you. Some people pervert it. And will pervert the gospel of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. but your the, spirit, hold on a minute. Okay. Your spirit can be so foul in what you are teaching by your disposition uh -huh. in the house of God Amen. that it will pervert the gospel of Christ. Because when I came to the house of God, I came to the house of God seeking the spirit of God. Amen. But when I got to the spirit of God, I met some folk who were under the legal system of man uh -huh. who looked at me because I sit somewhere that I wasn't supposed to sit near Moses' seat. Uh -huh. that is my, I met some folk who came in here who said they were members of the Lord's church. When I looked at them, I could see nothing that looked like Jesus anywhere in me. They were rolling their eyes, they were looking for him, had their arms folded up, would praise him, would give glory, and I marvel that that is not the gospel that you were delivered unto. You were delivered unto a gospel that the grace of God should empower you to say thank you, Jesus, and give him glory and praise. I know God has been good to you. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the grace of God. I know God has delivered you if it wasn't for the grace of God. He hung, bled, died on Calvary's cross to break the legal system that had you stop on stupid. Couldn't get rid of your sin, but because of his grace. Man. And I'm on. Though there be some that pervert the gospel of Christ. Uh -huh. uh -huh. He said, if we or an angel from heaven. I don't know why he stopped reading. But if we are an angel from heaven, heaven uh -huh, preach any other gospel to which, we which we have preached, I have delivered unto you, he said, let him be the curse. For I said now, I said, said now again, read, stay with me now. If you're looking at it, hold on a minute. If you're looking at it, I should have been stopping away on you. You ought to be sitting up. I don't care what you're doing. If you have I'm reading, if I'm saying you're looking at it, you ought to stay with me when I'm reading. Now let's start over there. Amen. All right, now if we, all right, man, if, if we, but though we, but though we, or in the heaven, preach any other gospel that was in the heaven to you, he said, let them be what? Let them be a let curse. Let them be a curse. And if you say the fourth, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Come on, man, I'm preaching other gospel. Do you then that you have received, 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 And what we're going to worry about why God said, we just do what God says 
listen to. Amen. Y'all say amen. amen. When I come to the house of God, I want to be free amen. to worship Him amen. in spirit amen. and in truth. Amen. I want to be free to know that the preacher is showing up preaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one, I want to be free to know that the people around me are not trying to put me in bondage. In chapter 2, he found Peter that was preaching to the Jews' circumcision. He found Peter that was preaching to the Gentiles that didn't have to be circumcised. He would say whatever it took to please one party or another, it was conflictual. And Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, I had to withstand Peter to his face. Don't you know that when folk are preaching, you better know they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it'll bring your mind in the bondage all over again. Man. You ought to know that when folk are preaching and folks sitting around and you can't say amen. And because the devil is incarcerated their tongues, that they can't say he's right. That's all you're saying when you say amen is that God. Is right. Am I right about it? And if I'm saying something from God's word, you ought to know that you're free to say amen. You're free to say, God, you're right about it. Am I right about it? Through three and four, he begins his discourse to explain circumcision and not circumcision. The conflict of Judaism versus Christianity, liberality versus those who are locked up. Don't you know that I'm the old law? The priests were the only ones that could worship for men. And the priests had to go in and pray for your forgiveness. But under God's grace and his mercy, John 1, verse number 17, can't you see the Bible says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Sit down, priest. You don't have to pray for me no more. I'm free to pray for myself. Yes. Stop running around looking for folk to pray for you. Pray for yourself. Yes. You're free to pray uh -huh. for yourself. Every now and then while the preacher's preaching, I just ask God something for myself. Oh, yeah. I, I, somebody hear me right now. But you need to stop waiting on me to ask him for something for you. I got my own list to ask God something for me. I need some steak. I need a new hat. I need some socks. Y'all not listening right now. You better ask for yourself. God's still working on me. I'm selfish with God. You better learn. You're free to talk for yourself. Somebody that needs help right now to say, help me, Lord. Uh -huh. Would you try to help you? I'm saying, Lord, help me. Y'all got to listen to me right now. You're free to express yourself to God because of the grace of God. You all right back here? All right now. Because under the old law, there was a difference between male and female. And people ought to stop going in this verse, talk about women preachers. Because that's not the text. They ain't talking about women preachers. They talk about the law versus the liberty in Christ. What the law did to folk in the Old Testament is that it put a high pecking order system together. And in that system, the only folk that be saved was that, that, that first the male was sanctified by circumcision. And through the male, the patriarch simply brought the female in, and the female was represented by the male, and the male was represented by Christ. But praise be to God, when he died on Calvary's cross, there was no more need for a man to represent you, not only in the pulpit, but even at your house. See, the reason you can talk noise at your house is because God doesn't free you. You can know God for yourself. Don't you know in Frederick chapter 14, the man had to take the family before God. The man had to establish a relationship in the patriarchal system before God. But Paul said in Galatians 3, verse number 26, that there is not the male or female, there's neither bond or freedom, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Uh -huh. Why not? Because we've all been baptized. For many of us that have been baptized, I mean, verse 28, have put on Christ Jesus. 
Jesus. So maybe if you don't want to go to church, I'm going to church anyhow. And I'm not going just to get in church, but I'm going to the Lord's church. Don't you know under the old law, if you have told your husband you're going to go to church anyhow, they will do rocks at you till you can stand straight. Aren't you glad that God freed you from the old law and you can worship God in spirit? Man, it's y'all. I said amen right now. Well, sisters might not be walking around the church saying thank you, Jesus, right now. But you know, your salvation is not predicated on what you got in the house. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. He can't even lead himself to God. How he going to lead you to God? He's struggling with his own stuff. But God has made a way. Now, now, listen to me right now. You don't follow men, but you follow Christ. And Christ has made you free to be able to side whether or not you're in a relationship with him or them. But as for me and my house, I'm about to say amen. Oh, praise God in the house. Praise God in the house. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Mm, have you understand all of that now? My struggles. I, I didn't want to do half of it. But y'all missing me this morning. Y'all are about the spirit of slumber. Uh huh. Y'all messing with me this morning. Y'all act like he didn't bless you. Uh huh. But I think God blessed you. But I can look at you and tell you, bless you, you haven't missed no meals. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sincere. I'm going to change his name. Uh huh. Sincere. Say, his name is Sincere now. Uh huh. And, and he done picked up weight since he started coming to the house of God. I know God done blessed you. Amen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Who else looks like they've been blessed up in here? Uh huh. I'm looking for who looks like they've been blessed. Now, you look like you haven't been blessed. I understand why you look like that. And, and if I had been blessed, I'd be mad too. I want my blessing like everybody else. I'm trying to find folk that look like they've been blessed and ain't going through hell right now. If you've been blessed, could you raise your hand and say, He blessed me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you haven't been blessed, just don't mess with folk that's been blessed. Amen. Amen. I can't have it because He blessed them and He didn't bless you. But if you act like right, He'll bless you too. Pray to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I look at the text. First, the text begins an assault on the church. Because when we get to Galatians chapter 5, there is the, the end result of a divided church. The end result of a divided house is conflict. I don't care, I don't care if, if your wife is hearing you there, the end result is going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict. You have to make your mind up. Who's going to stay with Jesus? Who with Jesus? And who moving away from Jesus? Amen. And I don't care what kind of concoction you come up with. There ain't but one way. There's right and then there's wrong. Uh -huh. And if we're going to stay with Jesus, Amen. we're going to stay with Jesus. Amen. Now, now, if you're going to start running the house, then, 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 then we got a problem. Amen. I got to make a decision of what I, where I'm going to stand. And so whenever there's conflict, starting with the heresy of the text, and then the behavior of the people, people have to understand that I, I, I'm in a situation where I'm at the right church, but there's conflict in the church. And I got to figure out how I'm going to deal with this the way Christ will help me deal with this. And so all of chapter 5, in particular chapter, uh, verse number 15, what Paul says in chapter 5, uh, verse number 15, Paul says that if we bite and devour, why are you saying, Paul, if we bite and devour one another? Because in 13, I told you that, that we are under Christ and not the law. And there's a certain conduct that we have to have amongst ourselves. And if we, we have differences, we can't figure out what's spiritual and what's legal. We have to look at the outcome of what's taking place in the church. Are you with me right now? And so he said, if you bite and devour one another, be careful you don't consume one another. Sometimes in my rightness, I become wrong. Can I say that again? Amen. If me and, 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 and Akil have a problem in the scriptures, Sean and I have a problem in the scriptures, although I may be right in the scriptures, if I eat him alive, right. it, yes. you might be right about the church. But if you chop them four up, not only will, will, will he lose his soul, but God is going to take care of you for right far away from the house of God. 
struggling with worship with God because something is manifesting itself and something is not bearing fruit. Look at the text again. Go, 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 go in your Bible. We're going to see this up here. In verse 18, he said, now, 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 I'm going to show you something. Uh, verse 18, he talks about the flesh, what the spirit, you are not under the law. He said, but now listen, I want you to understand this very quickly. He said, the, in the flesh are manifest. There are manifestations of the flesh. Now, I want you to forget about all that other stuff, barriers and all that kind of stuff, because you understand that stuff is wrong. A amen. Now, wherever you find your name in that list, you need to say, heaven and Jesus. Right. Because every one of us who are in the flesh is somewhere in that list. Amen. Don't you look at me Amen. like you're not in that list. Amen. Some of y'all practice on the only exercise you with which witchcraft joy you. Some of y'all walk over here envy. Somebody buy a barbecue grill, you go buy a barbecue grill. Just as envy and jealous. If somebody get a new car, you get a, who, you know you're in that list. Have I got on your street yet? Uh -huh. Some of y'all love fornication. Am I on your block yet? Don't you look at that list like you don't know nothing about that list. But the works of the flesh, it manifests itself. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me now? Yeah, Can somebody help me? Don't get mad. I saw three people roll their eyes and say, help me, Jesus. <laughs> now, this, this, this will help me understand what Paul was saying. Paul was saying, verse 20, Paul was saying, he was saying that, that there's a paradox in development. Because all of us got some flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There's nobody here better than anybody else. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's not a person in 